Hello everyone and welcome to Restorative Health Solutions. If you understand what's making you sick, then you can start to understand how to get better. More information is power. Hi, I'm Dr. Paul, and today we're going to talk about how to increase the diversity within the microbiome. So first, what exactly is the microbiome? The microbiome is a collection of microbes, primarily in the colon, that consist of bacteria, yeast, fungi, viruses, etc. A microbiome is most healthy when it's really diverse. This means that there's a wide variety of bacteria, yeast, fungi, and viruses within the microbiome. High diversity indicates a wide variety of microbes within the microbiome, whereas low diversity indicates a small variety of microbes within the microbiome. Approximately 70 to 80 percent of our immune system is in our gut, and a vast majority of our immune system comes from our microbiome. Here are some key functions of the microbiome. Manufactures certain vitamins in the gut. Aids in digestion by producing enzymes that help digest carbohydrates. Helps convert inactive thyroid hormone to your active thyroid hormone. Has a role in metabolism. Helps protect the body from foreign invaders like opportunistic bacteria, yeast, and parasites. Helps control the inflammatory process. Helps make most of the neurotransmitters in the body to help regulate mood and brain function, but also helps with communication between the gut and the brain, or what we call the gut-brain axis. Makes short-chain fatty acids, which are fuel for the colon, but also help regulate inflammation and positively affect the brain, and much more. The health of your microbiome is impacted by several things, including your diet, lifestyle, and environment. For example, toxins in the environment, eating highly processed foods or foods high in sugar, not getting enough good restful sleep, getting enough sunshine or exercise can negatively impact the microbiome. Certain medications such as antibiotics and steroids can also negatively affect your microbiome even though they may be needed at times. So what's the risk for having a low diversity within the microbiome? If there's a low diversity or lack of diversity in the microbiome, it can increase the risk for diabetes, obesity, autoimmune or inflammatory conditions, weakened immune response, allergies, digestive issues, and more. The next question is, how do you increase the diversity in your microbiome? To get a wide variety of microbes in our gut, we need a wide variety of color and foods in our diet. For example, instead of buying regular orange carrots all the time, mix it up and buy some purple carrots, yellow carrots, or white carrots. Instead of buying that green pepper every time, maybe switch to the red pepper, the orange pepper, or the yellow pepper. Instead of always buying romaine lettuce, maybe buy a bag of spring mix, or spinach, or arugula, or kale. So outside of eating plants rich in color and rotating your foods, what else can you do to improve the diversity within the microbiome? Here are some other things to consider. Increase fiber in the diet. Fiber is a prebiotic that feeds the probiotics. High fiber foods are legumes, fruits, vegetables, etc. Consume fermented foods like kimchi, sauerkraut, kombucha, kefir, or yogurt with no added sugar. Limit processed foods which can contribute to a lower diversity within the microbiome. Stay hydrated. Get regular exercise. Get daily sunshine. Have good stress management strategies. Get good restful sleep. Avoid unnecessary antibiotics. Sometimes antibiotics are necessary, so always consult with your healthcare provider. And consider a probiotic supplement. On a side note, consuming fiber, fermented foods, or taking probiotics can sometimes increase digestive symptoms in some people. So as always, consult with your healthcare practitioner to find out what steps are best for you. Well, I hope you learned a little bit today about how to increase the diversity within your microbiome. And until next time, I'm Dr. Paul.